I didn't play that music. <laughs> <Could we? laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, I love dance. Like, I mean, I totally love it. And I feel very blessed to be doing something with my life. My vocation and my avocation are meeting perfectly. So I grew up in a small country town on a sheep and cattle farm. I am one of six kids, so I never had one of those um, razzle-dazzle stage mums, you know, feeding me oranges side stage while I changed into my next costume. My mum simply had no time for that. She was at home breastfeeding. <laughs> my first dance teacher was one of those really scary ones. I don't know if any of you have... You have I'm sure there would be some of you out there that have <laughs> trained in ballet when you were younger, but she was, um, she was quite frankly scary, yeah. And uh, I remember beating a um, stick on the floor to keep time. And I also remember one class where this girl um, peed her pants out of sheer fear. She was just simply too afraid to... <laughs> anyway, blah, blah. But, you know, it was a bit scary. And I think that's not so fun. But anyway, my second ballet teacher was um, a breath of fresh air. And this is where the seeds of my love for dance were really sown. Roland was just cool and she was more like a friend to me. I danced a lot. I danced in good times, I danced in bad times, and dance became my friend and, and my muse and helped me out of um, all, si all sorts of tricky situations. So the farm, um, and I guess also growing up as a kid, um, there wasn't that much exciting stuff to do on the farm. But the farm did come in handy though, because uh, I would practice in the wool shed up the back paddock. That was my first makeshift dance studio. So was the English classroom, and so was my bedroom, and so was the living room, and I would dance everywhere. I remember when I was in year 12 at school, and I would teach anyone who wanted to learn how to dance. I'd just um, go into the English classroom and clear away the tables and teach people how to dance. So let's come back to the more recent past. So when I first started my business, I had absolutely no business qualifications. I was a dancer. I just got back from being two years abroad. And uh, I was very keen to learn, though, and have done a stack of courses in business since starting the school. And I feel very much more like a businesswoman now these days than a dancer. Um, I don't know if anyone else does this out there, but everywhere I go, I seem to be calculating and evaluating businesses. Like last week, I was at the Janet Jackson concert, and I'm sitting there, and I'm counting how many people are in the audience and trying to work <laughs> how much she's making in ticket sales. Does anyone else do that? I do it all the time when I go to restaurants and I sit there and oh, I, you know, I kind of analyse, oh, that would be better if that waitress was just a bit nicer or maybe if she was, gave a bit more smile and oh, it's kind of a little bit spooky sometimes. So yeah, so when I started my dance school, um, I just had two things in my sights that I would like to share with you, very simple. I, one was just to make enough money to... Um, to um, survive, just to cover my rent and my food. I had no ambitions of making any money, just to survive. So I worked out that I needed 15 students in my classes a week to uh, cut even. So I went after that number 15 like a bullet a gate. So it's 15 people, just 15 people. What a beautiful, beautiful feeling it was when I had 19 people in one class in my second week of business. So, and nowadays we have, uh, we run over 70 classes a week and yeah, we have stacks of people coming through Mad Dance. It's a, it's a real hive of activity. And to think that I started that is, is um, humbling and um, I'm very, very grateful. And the second main reason why I started my business was simply to dance. I didn't want to, because um, uh, before Mad Dance, I was just kind of working here, there and everywhere, waitressing and, you know, all that kind of caper. So I just, the second reason was I didn't want to um, do anything else but dance. And I remember quite clearly the moment when uh, this this happened. So I was watching a contemporary dance company here in Brisbane, Expressions Dance Company. This was three months prior to opening Mad Dance. And I got prickles all over me and I, you know, I started crying. I was moved to tears. I was so moved by what I was seeing on the stage. And it was in that, uh, that I realised that nothing made me feel as good as dancing did. Nothing in this world. No man, no, no friendship, no food, nothing. Dance was it. I, I reckon I could survive solely on that. So um, I remember having that quiet conversation with myself and I, I came to myself in that moment that I would do nothing else but dance. I would c give my energy to nothing else but dance. Did we get that? <laughs> Sick. Cool. So yeah, so uh, three months after that, that little conversation I had with myself, my dance was open for business. So um, about two years in, I'd just like to share another little triumphant moment I had. And... Um, that was the realization that my business actually has nothing to do with me. 
It was greater and bigger than me. When I could see how it was contributing greatly to the lives of so many people, uh, I could really, I felt a responsibility. And what is even better, I 100% felt my place in this world and I felt my feet on the ground. I have witnessed dance change people. I see people come through the doors of Mad Dance and within three months, they have a different energy about them. And every week I have people come up to me and say, thank you so much. And, uh, and they say um, how dance lifts me up and it makes me feel good. And I can really see that it separates people from the daily grind of their life. Dance gives us a vehicle to express the suppressed parts in us. So my mission statement is very simple. And it's just that people are given the opportunity to feel good about themselves. And when I anchor myself into that, um, I, I feel success. And my business has doubled every year since I had that um, revolutionary, revolutionary thingo. I couldn't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say that dance has no prejudice. Dance is not racist. Dance can cross culturally, bring people together. And you don't need anything to dance. You just need yourself. I think the performing arts are too, too, too important. I think there is a resurgence of the arts going on and I think that's really exciting. To express and be creative is cool, it's in. To sing, to dance, to act, to write a rhyme, to play, to play guitar is in, it's cool. We live in a, in a time where artists feel a demand to give out messages and we can really give out good messages that empower people and can shift an audience's emotional intelligence. The arts also finds people that may be lost like disadvantaged kids or folk in prison. Today's directors, choreographers, songwriters, playwrights, actors, singers, dancers are out there lifting people up, spreading a good vibe, lightening up a heavy situation, pouring light on topics that are perhaps taboo. You know, topics like anti-violence, anti abuse, depression. Artists are important to the development of society and community. So in conclusion, my seven little ballerina tips that I'd like to share. Uh, number one is be a lover. Love something. Feel its magic run through you. Make it real. And for artists out there, I really encourage you to keep going with your art. If it feels right, just keep going with it. Number two of seven is be persistent. I had a lot of no's in establishing my business. I remember when I first found our um, 600 square meter premises here on Elizabeth Street, the landlord, um, hung up on me pretty much four times and I just knew I could feel it in my instinct that the space on Elizabeth Street was the space for a dance studio. He didn't know it, I knew it, and I just stayed true to that feeling and I just kept ringing him. And it, no, I'm not joking, he would hang up like, no, not you again. And I just, I just couldn't let go of the feeling. Yeah. Number three is do something that contributes. Try not to get focused on blowing the horn of your own, if that makes sense. <laughs> so think about how you can positively impact the world and lift other people up. Number four is know yourself and watch your thoughts. I, I really find um, whatever I think comes true and uh, I, I seem to attract everything I need. So yeah, I, I attract gigs when I need them. I attract, yeah, just, a, yeah. So I always really make sure I'm um, watching my thoughts. And number five of seven is just be a good person. Just be a true person and only do business that's win-win. So sometimes I, I meet people and they want to do business with me, but they don't follow up on what we've talked about. Like it takes them two weeks or something. Um, they, they don't follow up, they're slow. And I, I go, no, I don't think you're a real deal. You know, like you're, or they're just a bit sloppy or they say they want to come and teach for me. And I say, send me your show reel. And then they don't. And, and then they come back a year later and but I've already got this impression of them that you don't follow through. Yeah. So, and number six, Courageous. Put your hand out. Just meet people. Just go up and meet people. And the last one is use frustration and setbacks as a catalyst for growth. So what I say is embrace the arts and artists. Audience members are dropping since the rise of the internet. So the next time you go to download that movie, why not Google um, local theatres or uh, local independent artist groups in Brisbane? There's stacks of them. There are so many amazingly, amazingly talented artists here in Brisbane. So um, thank you for having me. I'm done. And uh, for indeed, I think occasions like this really do rise up leaders in all of us. That's done. <laughs>